s p i d e Hi everyone, how you doing today? Welcome to Gigi Lao's Kitchen. One scan, you meet my daughter Christina, and she yes, <laughs> she have a special um, soup b o s today. What are we making today, Christina? So today we're making um, k a p i a k s i n which is a um, Laos soup, mm -hmm. and it's my favorite. Um, it is a chicken noodle soup with uh, thick noodles. All right, so we have so many ingredients. I know, like um, I cook different way from her, but she come up with all the new ideas. She's gonna show you how, and I love it. Every time I come spend the night at my daughter's mm -hmm. house, Saturday night and Sunday morning, this is my breakfast, right, Christina? Yes. And I absolutely love it. And I want to share her recipe and my favorite food with you guys. Yes. Okay. And if you guys know me, y'all know I love soup. So we're gonna do a quick introduction of what you need. Uh, I have a bag of rice flour here. Can get it at the Asian grocery store. Um, they have it at Kroger. Super overpriced. This bag is like 75 cents. So definitely make a trip to your Asian grocer. Tapioca starch um, is needed, and this is for the ingredients. We're going to be um, whipping up uh, the thick um, noodles. Um, these are garnishes. We have ginger, uh, green onion, cilantro, uh, your choice of lemon or lime. I prefer lemon, and my mom um, likes lime. Um, we have lemongrass, um, shallots, ginger, um, and what is this called? This is k e f a l a m leaf, and we also have g a l a n g a here, mm -hmm. and we also cut the shallots some, right? Yes. And then we have onion, garlic, yep. and uh, ginger. Ginger. There uh -huh. you go. All right, and then um, we have salt, and of course you're going to need your chicken stock. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's get started. Um, we have some water uh, preheating over here, and I'm going to start putting the ingredients into the pot so we can get started on the chicken stock. And this is our friend. We haven't introduced him yet, but we will. Here he is. <laughs> Don't scare. Don't be scared. Um, so you don't have to get the whole organic chicken with his head still on. Um, you can use uh, any type of chicken. Mm -hmm. If you prefer chicken thighs, you can use chicken thighs. If you want to use um, a whole chicken minus the head and the legs, feel free to do so. But just so y'all know, they run around with heads and legs all the time. And this hmm. is organic too. Right? And yes, this is organic. Um, now, key thing here, and this is what I've learned over time when you are making chicken stock. If you use a cheap chicken. Your broth is not going to taste like chicken broth because it has a bunch of steroids in it. Now, the more fresh the chicken, the better stock you're going to get naturally without having to add a lot of chicken stock or a lot of salt. So we got Bob the chicken here. Thank you for his sacrifices, and he's going to make an awesome stock, and you will see the color difference once we get started. So, um, mom, mom's going to make him look pretty for everybody. Yes, you I will. Want to take Bob I'll, over there? <laughs> Make him look I nice. I do the hot one, yeah. All right, so we have boiling water here, and I'm gonna turn this on. It's gonna be noisy. So usually I eyeball everything, but since we're doing measurements, this is one tablespoon of salt. Put that in there. Go ahead and do two tablespoons of salt. Okay. Um, once you get the salt in there, we're gonna do uh, two about two tablespoons of the chicken stock. What I usually do. Is if you look at the color of the water, I try to get a nice, I try to get a nice color. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more tablespoon. So so yes. far, I've added three tablespoons. Remember this: if your stock is uh, too salty or uh, has too much flavor, you can always add more water. But if you add too much water and not enough seasoning, then you have to add more seasoning. It's easier to make it strong and then um, add water to loosen the flavor. Okay, so. Um, We got to add Bob in here, but I don't want his head in here. So we're gonna clean him up, and then we'll add him in. Okay. So what I do, I go ahead, put the chicken in there, and let it boil for a while. Okay. And she's gonna put add the other seasoning that we need to put in for a few minutes. We get back to that. All right. So while Bob is in the hot tub, we're gonna get started um, <laughs> on. The garnishes um, to bring flavor to the soup. So this is a uh, garlic. Just cut it in half. Don't worry about the skins being on there. What we're gonna do is we're going to. I have a grill, a griddle, preheat, preheating. 
Um, mm -hmm. And we're gonna just get these on there and kind of give them a nice little Give grill. more like flavor and kind of like a smoky mm -hmm. smell to it, right? Yes, a smoky uh -huh. smell. And then yeah, we'll go ahead and do that with the onion. Okay, mom, you want to get them on the... And do we do ginger too? Or yeah. What? Oh, okay. I got an awesome little trick for that. We can, when you have a ginger, they're kind of weird. You can break it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to use this to keep in the stock. You can use a spoon and just scrape off um, the skin. Just like that, right? Mm -hmm. okay. If you have a little bit of skin, that's okay. So I'm just using a spoon and scraping uh -huh. off. That's the best way to get out, uh, get the skin out from the ginger. Bit. It's okay. I mean, it's not going to hurt you because you're going to boil it real good, right? You know what they say, <laughs> the nutrition's all in the That's, skin. And we could also grill the garlic fit down like this too to get the aroma out from your garlic and also onion and uh, ginger, okay? So. Okay, and you know, my daughter uh, get all the other ingredients. Of course, this is like Lao soup also, right? So I always tell her I love how like uh, galanta and, uh, you know, um, careful lamb leaf smell. So she said, that's no problem, mom. You can mix that more herbs. She said, it's good for you. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my uh, lemongrass, and I love this too. So you can put many herbs that you can, okay? It's going to be good for you. So you have to twist like this. Twist it up. Mm. Break no, no, it no. up. Get Break all it up. Nice uh -huh. out See now, I'm gonna go pot. ahead into the pot. Okay. Yeah. Add the galanga, lemongrass, careful lamb leaf. Bob's getting a detox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Get my cilantro, cut it. So that way we're gonna put on top of the soup when the soup is done, right, Christina? Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. We do um. Cilantro, Cilantro green and green onion. Green onion or spring onion. And then, you know, I personally love ginger so much, you know. And then I know some people don't eat fresh ginger, but I do. I like to put on top of my soup also. And then I already slide it. Um, see, like this. Then I'm going to go ahead use some fresh, but some I'm going to deep fry too. So. It's gonna be like two different things. Okay, see how I slide my ginger? Very tiny, I mean thin, thin slide. And then you wanna go ahead, slide them small. And just be really careful. Make sure all your finger is there when you do this. <laughs> okay, like that. See? Okay. So as we were cutting the garnishes, we kind of just let this sit on the griddle to... Let's see what it looks like. Perfect. This is what you want. You just want it to have a nice char. Don't even... Don't worry about the skin being on there. We're going to leave it like that even when we're tossing it in. Mm -hmm. Flip it. Oh, that smells so good. The aroma is amazing, Christina. It is. It's this nice, smoky mm -hmm. smell. Perfect. That's perfect. So I'm going to flip it and then just see how much char I can get on that side, and then we'll get it put in uh, to the pot. All right. Okay, you see how, like, I'm talking about cooking and how you want to eat food? Not the right way or the wrong way. How you like in your family eat your food, okay? See, I like lamb and my daughter like lemon, but it's no problem. So we both compromise each other how to cook, right, Christina? Yes. One day she was out of mind and I was so upset because she had made some pho. And she's <laughs> like, we have lemon, it's the same thing. And I was like, no, it's not. Mm -mm. Well, I, I put lemon in my pho and it was an accident and it just, it's like I choose lemon over lime now. So a little accident, I just kind of went with my taste buds on that one. That's right, and I left you, right? Yep. Like I all, mommy always say, no way, like not the right way or wrong way, just do your thing, right? Whatever tastes good. Whatever taste it good. tastes good and whatever you like. And many people ask question, Gigi, is your children know how to cook? Of course, my excellent cook, okay? So this is going to go on the side when we eating with the soup, okay? So I'm going to put this away. Got a nice uh, char here for the broth and I am going to drop it into the pot. Oh, wow. Don't worry about the leaves and stuff. We're, we're gonna strain this and all that will be out. Right. But just think of it as flavor. Let's get that in there. 
Mmm. Smell good. See, my daughter know how to cook and she's a good clean cook. So I told her every time she's cooking, you have to clean that go. Because our house, everybody have to learn how to clean after themselves. She said, one day, right? you'll make a night wife. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get ready to um, saute the chalets and the ginger. It's gonna go um, on top of the broth once everything's done, but you'll see how that comes together. Okay, you wanna cut like, uh, slide them like this, okay? before you deep fry them. See? That's my ginger, this is my chalet. Let's go deep fry. You know, one thing about cooking is um, we're used to eyeballing things, but we're using measuring cups today. So if you're following, you can make sure you get the uh, precise recipe. So we got one, um, I'm sorry, half a cup of um, canola oil. Get on before you put everything, you know, the whole thing in. Always test your oil first, okay? Make sure it's hot. Okay? Just not quite yet. Just wait for a second. That's perfect. Ooh, that smells good. Mm -hmm. And also, at once again, if you like your chocolate, stay with chocolate. But my daughter and I come up my each other. She loves chocolate, and I love ginger. So she said, "That's no problem, Mom. You can go ahead and mix the ingredients mm -hmm. together, right? Yeah. And which is good for it's really healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many great health benefits to all these herbs we put mm -hmm. in the soup. So if you don't like some, take it out. If you you never had it, do your research and just look at all the great vitamins and health benefits that all these herbs have to offer. Yeah, the ginger is excellent because that gives you so much energy. You know, beside the coffee, you wanna put ginger, uh, ginger on everything that you eat or drink first thing in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another garnish that we like to put into our kapiuk is uh, pork belly. Um, so you have two options here. This is just some pork belly. Super crispy, deep fried. Um, we made this one, but if you are um, in a rush, you can go to the um, any Mexican grocer, go to the back meat counter. You'll see them, they're already made um, mm -hmm. for you. So uh, we deep fried these, and what I'm gonna do is just get them in. I, you, I mean, you can cut them small. I mean, they're really crispy, to be honest with you. They're kind of just breaking on their own. Um, let's see. Yeah. This is perfect size because this is just gonna. Yeah, it's they gonna like get it to be small piece anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be um, a nice crispy with the the noodles. Chào say đây cứ cần cá bằn mù sám sắn, lừa và kẹp mù nha. Hay mắn ăn hò mắn cọp, ok? So you use similar to like a, a pork belly that you deep fry and make it crispy, and it's good. But meanwhile, you know, when I'm hungry while I'm cooking, I can snack and go to it. Mmm, quá xinh nào, good. Mm. Okay, let's come this way. Wow, Christina, look at that. Mm -hmm. The aroma in the kitchen is amazing right now. Mm. So we want to wait a little bit until the golden color, okay? Okay, see, this is perfect right here. It's kind of golden brown, guy. See how it's like compromise each other so well, the garlic and ginger? So I'm stop right here, it's perfect. Turn off my heat, okay? Turn off the wrong one. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put it in the bowl. So pretty, Christina? Mm hmm it smells good too. Mm -hmm. I'm starving Marvin. Yeah, me too. All right, see? Okay, what, what next, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> the noodles! The noodles, yes. Okay, so we had 
all those steps to get the uh, chicken broth started. Um, it's really not that much, many steps. We are going to start on the noodles now. Um, so we're making these noodles fresh. Um, first off, before we even get started, you need to boil some water. So follow me this way. Let's kind of check on everything. Um, when you're making these noodles, your water has to be boiling. Um, try on error. I did it when the water was steaming but not bubbling and my noodles did not um, work. So once the water is boiling, you know, got some bubbles in there, just like that. You can add vegetable oil. I like to use sesame oil. And Ooh. I would say about one tablespoon. Gives it a nice aroma. And if you look closely, it puts oil in the water. That's gonna help us later once we start kneading the dough. Oh. So I'm gonna close that back up and let it bubble and we'll get our uh, rice flour and tapioca mixed. Let's check on the chicken. See what it looks like. Oh wow. Mm, wow, look good and smells so good. Let's get stocked. All right, so you're gonna add um, one whole bag of the rice flour. Uh-huh. Funny story is when I wanted kapiak one time, I used to always buy, oh, I, I forgot to mention. <laughs> you can also buy these noodles pre-made if you don't feel like messing with it, I don't blame you. I used to pay um, for the pre-made packages and then I started going to the Asian grocer and some of them were just so hard and it was like a hit or miss 50-50 if I was gonna get it or not. I was like, all right, Christina, you're gonna have to learn how to make this. So um, I learned how to make it, make it before she did. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to my store. Okay? Let's keep it just for us. One point for me, zero for her. <laughs> okay, that, that's not true. <laughs> All right, so uh, we got one bag of rice flour. She's gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Ah, oh, the good old measuring cup. Go ahead and throw it in there. Okay. I'm gonna open up the tapioca starch. You're gonna use this whole bag. Now, the more, the more tapioca starch you use, the chewier your noodles are gonna be. Um, for me, uh, when you eat kapiak scent, I know traditionally they like it really thick to where, I mean, I don't speak a lot of Lao, so Yeah, kapiak. well, you know, uh, some people call say bang kam na, but she don't like it thick, like when chewy, okay? Yeah. You like, you don't like the chewy, you like it nice it. and soft. I like it like yeah. soft and like, yeah, and I don't like my broth so thick that it doesn't feel like broth, it feels more like a porridge. Mm -hmm. If you like that, the more starch, the better. For me, I like equal parts, so right. we're going to do equal part. So the most important when you're making uh, anything with flour, you're going to have to mix it, the two products together, real good first, okay? So the reason of that, you know, sometimes you like put the hot water in, they all separate and it's hot too, to mix the uh, flour together. So you want to kind of like take time and doing this, you know, make sure they mix well together. Get a nice mix. Yeah, get the nice mix before you put the hot water in, okay? When the hot water get there, it's gonna be so hot to mix them, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And here come the hot water. It was already boiling, and since we're trying to do the measuring cup thing, I usually just eyeball it, so um, I'm starting off with two cups slowly. I know it's gonna take most of it, so. Go ahead and pour two cups, remember boiling water. Mm -hmm. I added uh, sesame oil. I know some people have an allergy to sesame. If you do, you can use uh, olive oil, canola oil, whatever. Right. You don't even have to use oil if you don't want to. For me, it just helps uh, whenever we get into the kneading process. Yes. And I stand over here and I uh, smell aroma of uh, sesame seed oil. It it's so very fresh. good, but I'm not allergic to it, so I can go with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you say, you know, they can if use If you're allergic, oil. use a different oil yeah, and just yeah. customize it. Oil, whatever, yes. Again, one thing that you will hear us say a lot is mm -hmm. whatever your taste buds go for, I mean, play with it. That's the beauty of cooking is right, you get to right. customize your food to your taste buds. Yeah. So I've added two cups, obviously not enough, so I'm gonna go for another two more. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is like a good consistency where everything, yeah, hold that for me, where everything sticks. So we'll put some more. And just by looking at this, cause I've done it, I can tell you right now, the whole two cups won't hurt anything. Yeah. Yeah. She can do that because she have more muscle than I do. Yeah. And when you're, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you have a strong muscle daughter for. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're doing this, I'm just going back. Okay, I went to get some more water because as you see here, ooh, that's hot. 
it needs a little just a teeny bit more water so I'm going to maybe a little bit at a time huh? remember you go want to eyeball this so that was probably about two-thirds of a cup more so so far we're at four half four cups and two-thirds That looks good. That's perfect. I think, yeah, that's perfect. We just wait until, we wait, uh, keep stirring until it's cooled down and she's gonna knead with her hand, okay? Yeah, let's, but like right now, do not touch it. It's very hot, guy. Very, yeah, this very is hot. a good consistency. I've got mm -hmm. everything smashed together. Um, I'd say set a good 10 minute timer. Let's just let it rest. Don't even touch it. Mm -hmm. It's on the spoon like that. Just leave it for 10 minutes. All right. So we've let um, the rice flour and tapioca mix uh, sit for about, uh, I said 15 minutes, um, but you really want to just feel, you want to wait until like you can do this without going, ah, lava. Well, so, Christina, did you wash your hand? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did, I promise. If not, a little salt never killed nobody. Okay, so um, I'm going to get what I can off the spoon. See, it's, it's cool enough for me to put my hands in. And what you're looking for is like if you were to roll wow. this, it's gonna it's gonna be sticky to the touch. That's okay. That's awesome. So now, now what you do? Knead them. Knead it. Mm-hmm. And just go. And then you have to use a lot of muscle, right? Reminds me of when my grandma made me massage her when I was little. <laughs> I was like, yes, grandma. <laughs> I beat the rolls out of you. <laughs> All right, so just knee. And what I'm doing is picking it up, bringing it in, and then so if you, how you normally would if you were baking, and see the consistency, it's starting to mesh together great. Mm -hmm. If you guys have a kitchen aid, must I add you? Uh, I'm sorry, must I, mind you, if you have a kitchen aid, it's amazing. All you gotta do is the same ingredients and let your kitchen aid um, put the hook on there and let it spin until it catches everything and it'll make this for you. So kitchen aid, any type of baking assistance, that's fine. You can use that. But I like the old fashioned way. <laughs> she likes to. I enjoy watching people. <laughs> she wants me to get my workout in before we eat. So she wants to see the, she wants to see the tears and the hard work. <laughs> that's right. She said, if you ain't gonna we put in the work, to work hard then for don't food, eat it. You know? That's right. You know, that's honestly, funny that you bring that up uh-huh is I talk to people and they're like oh well, that's too much work I'll just do this for dinner mm -hmm. and I just feel like you know the love and work that you put into your food it uh -huh. makes it taste a thousand times better than just whipping up a burger for that day I mean unless you're absolutely tired well it's teaching the family appreciate the woman more you know and respect how we cook in the kitchen with our family like uh, mommy always say you know you have to love your family so much to cook for everybody mm -hmm. and when you have dinner just remember to say well i thank you you christina for cook for us today you know or you say thank you mom for cook us the food you know yep. what i mean so it's called like teamwork and i want this to go to our um you know, your niece and nephew and my grandkids. She wants me to be the homemade kitchen aid. <laughs> so and here I am. I tell you, it's, strong it's free. I did not pay for $300 for this. Like you go call, you can get some. I'm not advertising. <laughs> <laughs> We're not advertising. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> What's that place? What is that? <laughs> yeah. What are you? Okay, so I need this monster together. It is sticky. So here's the trick. You um, want to do down here too? No, no. I got, what I got to do, if, if it feels sticky, um, we need it to not feel sticky. So I got a bag of, I had this extra bag in my pantry. Remember when you first start, equal part rice and tapioca. This is just an extra bag. And I'm going to use it to flour the outside. And w the reason why is because when we start um, kneading it out and cutting it, we need it to um, not stick to the cutting board, not stick oh. to everything. Okay, so now look at the consistency when I do that. It's like there's no air bubbles, and that's what you want. So if you don't get that, keep massaging it until you get to that texture. 
Wow, that's looking good. If you had a kitchen aid, you'd be done by now. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, now you can tell the story. Remember one time mommy tried to do this at winter time and you wait for me to. <laughs> we didn't have the water boiling like that first story I told you guys. And um, so, see, it's a little sticky. What I'm doing is I'm kneading and as soon as I fill um, some stickiness, I'm gonna roll it back into that rice flour. All right, so I'm gonna get him looking like the Pillsbury dough boy here. <laughs> and I'm just gonna massage all this closed. Like a big bun, bun bow ball. Bun bow. Bun mm -hmm. bow. So keep practice, guy. If you don't know how to do it, like don't turn out uh, the right at first place, you can go ahead and uh, make the uh, rice soup, okay? <laughs> The mixture is easy. Playing with the texture and getting that right fill is the hardest part. These bags are 75 cents. Come on, like, instead of making um, silly putty one night, try to make kopiak noodles, you'll get it down. <laughs> All right, so let's let that. Wow, look at that. Okay. All right, so we have completed our mix for the um, kopiak noodles. I'm gonna take it out, and mom, can you put some flour down? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna put some rice flour down to stop it from sticking. Perfect. Let's get to use my hands. Mm -hmm. All right, best, easiest way to do this. It's so soft, I feel really sad for cutting it, but there's satisfaction. <laughs> Zoom in, father. <laughs> Check it out right here. So I've just cut it into four equal parts. Now you don't want these to dry out. So if this is your first time making the cookbook noodles, you want to put them in here and cover them with saran wrap as you work with one section at a time. Mm -hmm. you get your section cut off you're just oh so this is you're gonna need a dough near if you don't have one if you have a wine bottle a vodka bottle oh, any type of bottle <laughs> sitting around cover it in um, some what's it that plastic wrap plastic food wrap and then use it to knee it out so Now when you're kneading it, everybody has a preference when it comes to kopiak noodles and how thick they like it. Some people like it, the, the um, noodles to be thick. Some people like it thin and uh, small cut. I, I usually like it like udon. If you're familiar with udon noodles, they're thick, they're chunky. That's how I like my noodles. But my mom likes them thin. Mm -hmm. So we're like we meet halfway with everything else that we do. We're gonna come with a happy medium that's, size. That's, that's a happy family. <laughs> yeah, we meet halfway on everything. So. See what she mean by wrap with the uh, plastic? While she do that, so you wanna do this, okay? So at go, I kind of cover each one, so she continue do this one, and this is nice and cover up, so the air won't be dry the dough, okay? So just leave like that while she do that. If you can see how it's not even, it's kind of. It's definitely not even by any means. That's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect square and you'll see why. So there's a little tip and trick I do. I used to make this um, with my nephew and the little ones. They love playing with this like it's um, Play-Doh. So what they'll do is they'll sit here and they'll get their knives and they'll follow through and make their own noodles. And it, it gets them so interesting and so interested that um, they, they'll eat all their soup because they want to eat all the noodles they put their hard work into. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I need to cut this open better. There you go. Is you're gonna put some flour on the inside and what I do is I fold it, do a very small layer there, fold it, kind of like a little yummy hostess Twinkie. Fold it there. And every time I fold on this side, what I do is I add some flour. It's okay if you add a lot of flour. You're going to shake it off here in a second. 
and then you'll be able to use it for your next batch. So you don't feel like you're wasting it. And again, mm -hmm. 75 cents a bag, you can't go wrong. So, perfect. So now it's gonna look like this cinnamon roll. That's look nice. Okay, yeah. So my trick is whenever we're trying to figure out how to cut the cupcake noodles, is starting at one end and then cutting it and seeing what size you like. Oh, you know what? I, I really like to add a bunch here because it helps when I cut it. It doesn't stick to my knife. Because uh -huh. this dough, this tapioca is like a starch, so it's real sticky. Wow, you make everything look so easy. You must have a lot of experience in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with ramen. I'm obsessed oh. with soup. Catch me. You love any soup, right? I love soup. I can have soup in the dead outside, 108 degrees, I'll be mm -hmm. eating soup. That's why mommy picked you to do the video with me. It's just You're so an expert. comforting to have soup. Now you've got this. And if you want to come in closer, this is the kabut noodles. Wow. This is going to be our noodles. That's so good. All different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. Now once you get this, you could shake off a little bit of the powder. I'm going to throw it back into this bowl. And we're going to continue on doing it so forth. And then again, once you get your noodles made, you're going to um, cover it with saran wrap. These noodles dry out really fast, so you want to make sure you're keeping them covered as you go. Okay. This is going to be the second one we start with. Again, once you take it out, it's going to be a little sticky. Put a little rice flour down, and you want to knead it flat. This is a messy thing. I mean, I used to be so messy in the kitchen making this. Um, I'm still a little messy, but not nearly as messy as when I first started. So if you make a little mess, it's okay. That's perfect because uh, this kind of deal, you have to be messy, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very gently. You don't have to uh -huh, yeah, run right? it over like roadkill. You don't want to pan. You don't want it so flat that whenever you're cutting it, your noodles have like no thickness to it. So. It may look like I'm pushing down hard, but I'm really just guiding it and just trying to shape the noodles. I'm trying to make it a square, even though I know that's not gonna happen, but that's the image I'm going for. And just feel it. See, this is good. Again, you don't want it too thick. Perfect, that's good. I feel like a pizza tosser. <laughs> I'm work at a pizza place if I wanted to. <laughs> okay. Again, rice flour, mm -hmm. cake it on there, roll it, take some flour on there, roll it. And you'll see what I mean whenever you're trying to slice this. This is my take on taking a shortcut. If you don't put the flour in between and you try to cut it, every time you make a slice, it will get stuck to your knife. Just mm -hmm. all this hardening and it is, so you have to kind of get the knife clean with the flour a little bit too, you know, sometimes, yeah. right? If they get uh, sticky, you know? It's just like... But you put plenty there. Yeah, I got plenty perfect. there, so yes. I'm just getting it rolled in. This is probably not because it was uh, rolled out, so I'm uh -huh. just gonna pick that off. That's okay. Cut. <laughs> Wow, that's look good, huh? That's perfect. All right, two more rolls to go. That look good or what? We don't know what's been. All right, so the chicken's been simmering. Come on, Bob. I gotta get it. I'm gonna be careful because I don't need him coming back with vengeance and popping on me. There you go, stick it. <laughs> <laughs> stick it with me, hand on. That's where her professionalism comes in. 
All right. There you go. Take a look at the color of the broth and why um, I mentioned using an organic chicken. The broth is nice and yellow. Look at that broth. If you sometimes, um, if you happen to get a chicken, if you want to do chicken thighs, that's perfectly fine. All right. So now, um, this nice, rich yellow broth. Mm -hmm. We are going to take um, all the ingredients that we boiled out and just press down. Yeah, we all don't the need those stuff, huh? We don't need it. All the flavors taken from it. So uh -huh. you're just gonna. You could pick it up and strain it. It's um, a two-man job because you don't want it to splash on you. So it's, if you have a strainer, just use the strainer. Just get everything out. Um, one thing that you will notice is if you can find the freshest chicken to make chicken stock, you're going to notice a big difference. There's this nice, rich yellow color that you wouldn't get if you bought um, a chicken that had a lot of steroids in it. Um, so when you're making this, I'm not saying you have to buy an organic chicken, but try to find the freshest um meat you can even do a beef broth or chicken broth try to find the freshest ingredients especially when it comes to that because this whole plate is uh focused on freshness and the chicken broth so i'm gonna keep doing this and i'm just pressing down and just trying to make sure we don't waste any of that good mm -hmm. broth because yes. remember when we um when we grilled everything we threw the leaves in and stuff so we want to get that out so perfect pure chicken broth all right, so we strained um, the chicken broth. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. Now um, we're gonna uh, take Bob apart and get him ready to go. So. I got my little cleaver here. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm gonna take off his the main components, the legs and wings, and it's, it's fall off the bone. It, wow. wow. I didn't, no effort needed. So the longer you let it simmer, it's just perfect. That's even better. Again, my hands are washed, so. Careful, it's hot. It is hot, but. I'm about to just eat this. <laughs> you? I eat it right now. Mmm. One thing so good. about fresh chicken. Mm-hmm. This, that kind of like, you know. It's like. Chewy. Yeah, this should be chewy, but like melt in your mouth. I look at more flavor too. So much flavor. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get his thighs off. Thigh, 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 thigh. Oh, he's mad. He's hot. <laughs> I let him cool down. He's still hot. All right. No fat at all. Look at that. Look at this. It's just. Wow. Clean off the bone. There was no effort there. So the, the great part is that since it's fall off the bone, I'll use my tongs here because this is just piping hot. Oh, mom, mm. you ever hear the myth about this? Make a wish. Whoever, break it. Whoever gets a bigger piece makes a wish. Oh, I got the whole thing. <laughs> I cheated, kind of. She cheated. <laughs> I win! <laughs> She's win because she do all the work, right? <laughs> You're gonna get all the credit for today. Yes, I love the chicken. Person. If you like thin slices, you can do thin slices. I'm gonna make it chunky. Thank you for your sacrifice, Bob. So now, what we have here, we got the noodle is ready and the chicken's here ready. So you have to take a look at the bra, okay? These noodles are notorious for sucking up um, a lot of the broth and it goes into the noodles, which is fine. But like I said, I don't like, I like to have broth when I eat and less um, thick than usual. So you have to eyeball it. And my, you know, whenever I'm uh, feeding the family this uh, soup, what I do is I think one handful per person. And that's what I drop into my broth. So you, if it's only a couple people, you can even um, just make sure that you're making it proportionate to how many people will be eating at that time. Right, and when you put the noodle in the broth, the soup broth, you be careful. Don't put like whole damn the whole thing in. Just take your time. Get what all the like, you know, stuff yeah. out, the powder out. 
what they'll see is if, yeah. if you do that you want to make sure you have them even and you're letting it in slowly because what you'll see is a lot of your broth will go into those noodles and then you won't have any broth yeah just so i like wall it first mm -hmm. make sure that it's not um too uh thick Okay, when the noodle flow to the top is ready and you want to go ahead and put your chicken in or add the chicken to the pot. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> oh yum, look perfect. See? Okay. Okay, I like a lot of soup. Wow, look at that. How my alcohol beer look like, okay? Then you wanna put some stretch chi chicken, put some chicken, and this is uh, onion, oh, I'm sorry, ginger and chocolate. Like I said, I love seasoning, so. This one is the pork, pork belly, or crispy pork. I'm gonna use my hand, my hand is clean. Spring onion, cilantro, and I love fresh ginger. Handful, that. And then you're gonna put all the seasoning how you want, okay? Of course, I like a lot of black pepper. And you know what it is, right? Ah, oh, I know it. my homemade chili don't be shy I love hot stuff so okay look like it's a lot of stuff right and of course I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar but every time I use sugar I'm gonna have some lamb squeeze the lamb in Leave it there. Leave All right, Christina. Our hot work is done. Good job. High five. High five. Oh, and wow. see, I like lamb and I like lemon in mine. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Cheers to different tastes. See, buds. that's what I say. It's no wrong way or right way. We all can get along, even we like two different things, mm -hmm. right? That's her family. Take a look and at this. And her bowl is small. My bowl is super jumbo. They're, these are two mama bowls, and they're going to be in <laughs> here pretty soon. <laughs> Welcome, cross a look. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Look at that texture. You know how like we love our noodle to be like nice and soft, but if you like kind of thick and chewy, you can add panko meal, okay? But my family don't want that, so we only use pan pan jiao, okay? But this is how uh, Gigi family eat, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Look at that. Hon, hon, hon. <laughs> it's super hot. It's, it's like super hot. <laughs> I'm drooling, but I don't want to burn mm -hmm. the top of my mouth. This soup is nice for, um, mm. you know, like morning, like this is a morning time, mm -hmm. so it's for breakfast. So in Laos, it's morning, but over here, you can do like dinner, whatever you want, special winter time, it's excellent. Mm. It tastes the broth. And it's not mm. Wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. So good. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, and look at the chicken. You know, my daughter, she don't use the other chicken, but it has to be organic. She said, mom, you can say the big difference. You know, I use like, okay, whatever is easy to grab from grocery, and I throw in a pot, and one day she stopped me, no, mom, when you don't know how to do soup, you have to do it right. And she write about that, okay? It's a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. Try the difference. Look at that. Leave a comment below what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. Have you cooked with a chicken that wasn't fresh and messed up? Or did you notice a difference? Let us know in the comments. Oh my gosh. Wow. Mm. So good. the ginger and the chalets. Mm -hmm. Well, when you make a beer, don't go light on the um, herb, okay? And seasoning has to be strong. First taste of the soup, you wanna be everything like, mm -hmm. wow, it's so good like that, okay? And your friend and family gonna come, wow, what y'all put in there? Mm. Yeah. She had a lot of friends come over on the weekend. This is the best little treat, a crispy pork. Mmm. This is like uh, my back home when I'm a little girl, go to school. When, when I was a little girl, I go to school. That's what I have for breakfast. I would take mm. this over pancakes any day. Why don't they sell this for breakfast here? I don't know. Maybe we open one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating. Oh. <clears throat> A good sweat though. It's not sweat, sweat. Mm. Now these look these noodles, they're slippery little devils. So, you know, if you eat it with a fork, what will you? So, see, I showed you the noodle. It's not good. Mmm. Good now. Nah. Oh my gosh. So good. Mmm. I cry right now, guys. <laughs> hot from the heat and hot from the hot pepper, but I don't know how to stop the ginger aroma from the ginger, garlic, and everything else. Oh, God. Ooh, that's so good. set to 69, and I'm still sweating over here. Oh, wow. Guy, the soup is so good. You have to try this at home, okay? And have your family member help each other. You know, more hand is better, it and is. more idea is also better too, right? I always grow up cooking like not too much of the herb and spice. And my daughter say, "Hey, mom, look, let's do this way." And like I say, two people like two different things. Get them together and make it happen, okay? And um, remember, follow your taste mm -hmm. buds. At the end of this video, we'll have um, the recipes listed for you. Um, please don't yes. forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Mm -hmm. We are going to devour these bowls now in private. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for watching my show, okay? And have patience with me. I know I take a long time to cook, but I make things happen because it's Gigi Lao's Kitchen. <laughs> Lock on. Bye. Bye-bye. Lock on. Lock on. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching my video. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Yes, <laughs> 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 <laughs>